You're listening to One Non Blonde, the podcast that goes beyond the surface and digs deeper for the truth around us. I'm your host, Kim. Join me for this weekly podcast where my amazing guests sit down and talk about what's going on in their mind. You might be surprised and always be entertained. Welcome back to One Non Blonde. I'm your host, Kim. And wow, it has been a while. I am so excited to be back. Um, I took some time off because I just needed to recharge. I just needed some, I don't know, some clarity in my life. And, you know, with COVID and all the holidays and everything. And I just was like, do I want to do this? Should I do this? And um, God is amazing, you know, and he, and he brings people and situations in your life in, in, in some of the oddest ways. I mean, uh, one of my good friends, Deidre, uh, she has been like one of my number one champions. She, she loves what I do and I love what she does, what she writes. And she's just an all around wonderful person. And she texted me and she's like, oh my gosh, Kim, are you still podcasting? And I'm like, well, I kind of took some time off. She goes, well, I have the person that you need to talk to. He is amazing. And it's going to change your life. And I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, that's, you know, it's like kind of like that, uh, all the products in the world is going to change our lives, you know, like put this beauty cream on, it's going to get rid of your dark circles, which I'm still trying to figure out how that's going to happen. But anyways, um, so she introduced me to this uh, gentleman that I am going to uh, have on as my launching pad again. And, you know, when she texted me and I'm like, oh, okay, life coach. Okay, cool. No, but, you know, you hear life coaches and she's like, no, he's not a life coach. He's a life mentor. And I'm like, okay, what the heck does that mean? So without further ado, I have now learned what a life mentor is. And also I have got a new friend and a truly a new friend in my life and somebody who really is inspiring and um, changes everybody's, it changes my perspective, which is one of the reasons why we're talking today. So um, I welcome to my show, Andre Cohen from California. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me there. I am so excited because again, I, you know, my first like, oh, life coach, what, you know, but you're not a life coach, you're a life mentor. Could you kind of explain yeah, that? Yeah. Right. Well, you know, it's just the, the final ending of the word. One is a coach for mentors, okay? And a mentor, especially in, in, in what I'm doing, he walks with you from zero to hero. He doesn't just give advice and give you strategy. It's all includes, but we walk into the final destination together. I don't believe in gaps. I don't believe in... in, 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 in specializing in anything because we are so holistic as people. We have our personal life, we have our intimate life, we have our spiritual life, we have our work life. So over the 40 years I'm doing that, I found out if you exclude one thing, you might miss something. And when you miss something, it can leave gaps in a person where it's an improvement, but not all the way because we all have in our life hangnails. And to remove these hangnails, it's important to move smoother. It's all about mindset and attitude. Okay. And uh, so when I started life mentoring, I started out really from the bottom. I was a family counselor. And uh, I'm a behavioral scientist. And when I talked to this families and the family members, I found out you cannot fix a family when you cannot fix any person. Okay. How are you going to fix a family if there's three dysfunctional or four dysfunctional people? They need to be fixed. Then you can fix a community. And that's how I, I dug deeper in, in uh, all kinds of spiritual uh, ways and, and, and scientific ways. Uh, there's different energies we live on with our spiritual energy, with our everyday energy, with moving forward with our mindsets, what influences our mind, patterns we develop, habits we develop, they are the hangnails because we're not aware of it, because we develop them, they became a part of us. And I, I think 
that's like, you know, you and I've had this conversation before. I don't even think sometimes we realize that we have these hangups and that we need, we need something to motivate us. What usually triggers a person to feel like they, they should go to you or should seek something like a life mentor? Well, there is um, a several aspects. There are some people that say, okay, <laughs> I have to say, when I leave, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. People think when they seek help, they're weak. Mm -hmm. No, they are very strong because they can admit it. They're very strong because they can put their ego out of their way and say, okay, I need help. And uh, that is nothing unusual. Uh, it comes when it comes to our mind or to our emotional health. Uh, people always think, oh, if I seek help, I'm crazy. No, I don't work with crazy people. Well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're hanging out with me, so let's go with that. <laughs> so, you know, always people think, no, it is just to embedder your life, your mindset, and to find out what is giving you the feeling to feel stuck or to feel uncomfortable. And that comes from, from, from many aspects. It is, comes uh, from things we think we are healed from, but it's still subconscious down there. And it's almost like a heartburn come up once in a while. And we're not aware of it because we go on with our daily life and just push it aside. And uh, that can be a, a reason for, and then, there are the people that say, okay, I want help. Then the other people that say, you know what? I don't know what's happened with me. Uh, I, I, I just can't get it together. I'm successful in, 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 in my job. I'm, people like me, but I, I still don't feel comfortable. And here, we work where it comes from. We go on the bottom of things. So... I don't believe in problems. So we don't find a problem, we just find a solution. Because a problem appears, the person doesn't feel right. So we say, very, very simple, and that's why I'm the simple list, why don't you feel right? And we go through all life situations and we can filter it. For some people it's a spiritual reason, for some people it's, it's, it's a habit they developed, they don't know. For some people, is they haven't digested things that happen far back. So we take it from there on. And I found out the most effective way is, I always ask people, where do you want to go? What is your goal? And then I make a status quo with them. And I say, okay, that's where we are. That's where you want to go. This is the route we have to take together. And I walk with them step by step. And that's why I say I work differently too. You have weekly sessions. They're great. They're really great. But let's say today is our session right now. And we hang up. And something happened tomorrow. And you have an urgent question. Why should you wait into the next session? So I establish with all my clients the possibility to and get in contact with me, email, text. And if, if it's something really urgent, I give a call back in between because then there's no gaps. You know, we can go smoothly on and, and the communication. Communication is the key. It's really the key. Uh, and uh, I found out that when people listen and don't ask when they don't understand, that's when they get misled. Asking a question is very, very important. Very, very important. Because how do you learn if you don't ask what you don't know? And that's another thing too. I don't believe in one size fits all. So with every client, I make a special program with them together. A customized program and says, okay, that's your age, that's your status, that's your job, that the thing, that's where you're at, that's where you want to go, okay. And we find out how they feel comfortable. Overwhelming with hip hip hooray, you can do it, somebody, 
and put more pressure on than people have anyway right now, that is not an effective tool. So you got to go in their pace. Sometimes you have to push, yes, because uh, I believe we really can get comfortable when we step outside our comfort zone. Because our comfort zone is sometimes to be used to something. We've been used to be yelled at. Okay? Maybe we grew up in a house where it was loud. Maybe the husband or the wife or whoever yelled at you. So you got used to it and it's still uncomfortable. So changing that pattern means you have to step out of your comfort zone to become comfortable. You have to say, okay, I had that 30, 35, 50 years in my life. I don't want that anymore. So we have to find a way to doing it. And that's where it comes also to relationships. Why is the relationship not working? And sometimes it is little, little things. When I work with both clients in a relationship, it is little things. If you remove them, it works again. Okay. Oh man, she's just the egg. Oh, he's just an old fisherman or whatever. And that has to do also with gratitude and taking things and people for granted. And if we remove these little things, we really get some great results. You know, it's, it's, it's sometimes the little things that turn out big. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because I know um, I'm blessed to have you as a Facebook friend. And every day you start out with some kind of quote, whether they're yours or like you said, you find things that, you know, you find that might inspire you from somebody else. But everything's always about, and this is what I love about you, it's always about gratitude. It's always right. about change. It, but it's not like a pushy way. It's just like, if not today, when, you know, type of situations or, you know, um, be happy and grateful today. Today's a new start. Today's a new day. And I love that because I think so many people, I don't know. I, I just, we were talking about this. Remember we were talking about um, when we were on the phone about people with Disney, even it's like, it's supposed to be your happy place. And all I do is complain. It's like, you know, you should be grateful because a lot of people don't get a chance to go to Disney, but you're complaining about have to wear a mask, don't have to wear a mask, whatever. Not about, it's not about politics. It's just about people have to complain about everything. Do you think that's why many people are stuck in a rut or stuck in this woe is me, no matter what I do, it's just, it's never going to work out. I'm never going to be grateful. I'm never going to be, I'm never going to find that, that happiness, that golden mean that we, that we all try to strive for because they kind of, they already sabotage it themselves. Yeah. There, there's also a few aspects of it. It is every personality and every person is different. Uh, like I mentioned before, there's the ego. Okay. No, I figure it out myself. And uh, as you see, I have two Facebook pages. They're both maxed out. And when I watch these people over the years, after a year, they tell me the same thing. So they didn't figure it out. So it was ego and wrong pride. And uh, I made a funny posting. I said, I would you get married again? That exploded. It is, <laughs> so, it is very funny. Yeah. Uh, I post about habits, about changes, about attitude, how I feel it today. I, I, I go a lot by energies I receive and that's how I form my postings. Um, and I, I do that. I think, okay, today a lot of people say, man, I need my coffee. Oh, a lot of people are tired today. So I form my posting for those majority of people that feel the Monday blues, okay? <laughs> And, and, and try to, to lift them up. I do that now for years and I, I really enjoy it. And I, I get uh, really nice feedback of that. And um, some of them are even my clients and uh, became my clients. And they say, you know, it is very funny. We were always thinking, who is this guy? Who says always, you know, do this and change and do that and, and do it now. But you really live what you do. Because I change things daily too. We have to. Because every day is different. The atmosphere is different. Our spiritual uh, thing is different. Um, 
you open the mailbox and get five bills, it's, it's not a good day, right? Right. <laughs> you know, but, you can, but you can make it good. You can say, okay, and that's, it has to do with structure. Yeah. And that's why I'm going to simple my list. I have three stacks of bill. Have to be paid now, have time, bullshit. <laughs> I know. Well, I I have to say that um, I, again, love the fact that because we became friends, I get in the morning, I usually get some kind of good morning from Andre <laughs> saying, hope your day's going great. You know, I, I it's so nice. It is so nice to um, have somebody who, I mean, like I have my family, don't get me wrong, but somebody who's like outside of that parameter who really wants to just say, hey, you know, I just want to say hi, have a great day. I hope things are going well. You know, God bless, you know, you, you know, today is a good day for you to do something. And, and I love that. And I think a lot of people need that. Well, that's how we build community. Okay, that's how we build community. And it is so funny, uh, like I said, I, I work mainly online because I have clients in Canada and in, in, in South America and in Europe. So online is the only way of doing it. And sometimes I even show up in these places. I travel there and give a three-day seminar so people can meet me, and which is good. <clears throat> but the, the major part is when you connect to people, even social media, and you scroll through it, you say, well, if everybody would be as happy as the quotes, why isn't the whole country smiling? Mm -hmm. So what you see behind the quotes, they like the quote. It is a quote from, let's say, good or, or, or Eisenhower, or whoever had this quote on a day. You can pretty much say subconscious how they feel. They need this inspiration. Otherwise, they wouldn't post it. Yeah. Okay. Where when I post things I like as well and but mainly my posts are originals originals out of 40 years experience and everyday experience and um, the funny part is uh, I collected them and I put them together as a book <laughs> simple thoughts and I made sure there's for every situation every person, every age, every gender, every color, something in there would lift them up. I know you were telling me you're working on your book. So that to me is important because again, I love your quotes. I think having something like that, and you know, um, even just like reflecting on it, you know, uh, the quote, and then like you said, maybe writing something about it or or like having this conversation with you, which is what you would do as the mentor um, to help people to kind of connect to what they need. Because I think sometimes it's like, um, we connect know- Connect is important, connect to themselves. Yeah, because like, you know you need to do something, but yeah. you don't know what it is. And I think that's like sometimes where you need somebody to be, like you said, take the ego out and just say, I need, I need, a, I need a, a kind of like an even playing field, somebody who's going to help me look at myself, look at my thoughts, look at my patterns, see where I am kind of self-sabotaging, which I wanted to ask you about that. Do we self-sabotage? And, and, and I'm sure you've seen that a lot when people just kind oh, of like yeah. self-sabotage. Oh, yeah. Is that like somebody who comes to you a lot? Somebody who's like, they don't realize they're self-sabotaging, but they know there's something wrong. You know what the what the basic of self sabotage is? Excuses. No. Excuses is the biggest self sabotage. Find an excuse not to advance. Oh, I'm good. I feel good. Um, I want to get a little example here. I had a, a lady. She was coming to me and say, you know, I feel great. I'm single. I don't have to have uh, any, any hassle with men. And, but the thing is, I want to improve my mindset. I said, that's awesome. And we started working. And uh, we were going a little bit back in time. And, you know, she had a relationship. It was not a happy relationship. But here it comes to... Uh, that's why I sometimes also have dating 101. 
when I say dating 101, I, I, I say, okay, do not go in a relationship with the wrong intention. Okay. But so why does it mean know what the wrong intention is? I don't think some people realize that. So how would you like tell somebody don't go in the relationship with well, the wrong intention? Wrong intention is... I feel lonely. I want to date. I want to have a relationship. That is a wrong intention. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hello? All right. You there? Frozen for a moment. You were frozen yeah. for a second, but you're good back. You're back. We're back. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and, uh, that was all good and the wrong intention i go back it's i feel lonely i feel alone because then i grab something i'm not alone but it doesn't it's the other part of me the other thing is financial security i find that a lot i find that a lot when I talk to people and they say, well, uh, you shouldn't look like you're frozen again. Okay, yeah. now you're off again. You're back. Um, <laughs> Just keep talking. Day, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and they tell me from 100%, 65%, the first thing is financial stability. But they look in a relationship. Mm. And another 20%, it's the second part, love and financial stability. But it's the top three. And now I think I'm going to get beat to death. But it's mainly women. Yeah. Men don't look for it. Men look for wrong intentions too. Uh, men look for a nice body. Okay. I go to that too. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, being a good cook. Well, everything can be learned, you know. So I think ring, wrong intention, or I, I, I want a nice chick yeah. next to me when I go to the bar. Mm -hmm. it's wrong intentions. That yeah. Wrong intentions. And um, we find it also very interesting when people had a relationship that didn't work out and they spend some time for themselves and they get ready to go into a new relationship. All of a sudden, their priority changes. The priority says, I just want to be visible. I don't want my husband coming home, eating and watching TV. No, I'm here too. Yeah. Or the other way around, the husband says, I'm, I don't want to come home, eat, and she's already in bed because she's tired. Uh, you know, people want to be visible again. And how to achieve that has a lot to do with us too. And here it comes to our personal billboard. People always ask me, what are you talking about a personal billboard? Personal billboard is not only our looks. Personal billboard is our aura. Our spirituality shows in our face, believe it or not. I if believe you. Know, you. <laughs> being good spirit, man. When I'm really in a damn good mood, I'm like 20 years younger when I look in the mirror, you know? <laughs> Which is hard to do in my age. But oh, I know. That's how I feel. <laughs> But I achieve it. Uh, uh, our personal billboard is, is, is how we talk. How, what is the content of our work? And it is also, and that what people have forgotten, sadly, to listen. When, when a person, and I posted it, I think, today or yesterday, listen to the other words. When I, when I tell you I love you, listen to the other words around this I love you, what I tell you. Does, okay. it, does it go there to this I love you? Or is it just I love you standing there because it's nice to say in all the words, other words drift in every direction. Words and, as well as actions. Yeah. And we have to we have to get back to that and learn that. And it's really a mindset. And a lot of people say, I can do that on my own. And I say, good luck. Uh, I always say life is like a sports game. If we don't have a referee with rules, we have no winners and no losers, just two teams beating on each other. Yeah. 
So the view from the outside is neutral and the view from the outside see things we don't see because we're in it. You know, if you in a, in, in, in a big lake and you swim in it, you don't see how big it is unless you look from above. And some people underestimate the, na the, the natural feeling of an outsider who is not only an outsider and natural, but he also knows about a pattern we develop. And how do you know? Because I'm a human being too. I develop pattern. I develop things. Uh, I, I became aware of and had to remove. We're all humans and uh, we are not perfect. And that's another thing. We have to get away from this perfect image because the perfect image collapses. There is no perfect. We always have to look at ourselves too. You know, when, when I'm in a business meeting because I work, uh, work with people too, they have businesses and they come to me and says, how can we do with my personnel and that and that. I always say, how is the leadership? What do you give your people? And then I talk to the people and say, what do you give to the company? Because only if we all bring it to the table, we all have to eat. If only part of it brings it to the table, you only have a little bit to eat. So you have to bring it to the table. We have to take ownership of ourselves and our mind. No, of our mindset. Because uh, people say they're unhappy because of many things. They have to become aware that there is happiness in them. It just has to be unlocked. Yeah, it has to be unlocked. Some people lock it up being afraid of getting hurt. And here, I wanna go right back to when I said, I work and look at a person spiritually and I look in reality. Because we have two hearts, right? We have the organ who pumps the blood and we have the spiritual heart. If we wouldn't have it, the whole world would be dead already because when we say my heart is broken, if the heart is broken, you're dead. So it's a spiritual heart is broken, mm -hmm. emotional heart. So we have the organ, and this is the same as our brain. I said the brain we have in here is our heart drive. And our mind feeds it, and it processes it. So our mind influences what we put in here. If we are negative, it puts negative in there, okay? And like by bookkeeping, the one side the negative goes on there and, and we're emotional in debt. Yeah. We're bankrupt. We're emotional bankrupt. Okay. If, if we cannot remove some of the negativity and get rid of it. And then I had a, a lot of discussions with them um, of, of, of my, I have clients out of a similar field that I'm in. They're therapists and, and a couple of them are clients with me. Clients for a couple of reasons, because I work very hands-on and we talk about uh, how they can be more hands-on. But when, when we think about all of our mindset, I have the discussion and they say, well, this person has to change. And I go, oh, no, no. And they say, why not? Because of the person. I say, no, a person should never change. Because you are born, you are born as you are. You just adopt that things are not good. You experience things are not good. Things are happen to you are not good. And that manifested maybe some negativity. So you adjust your thinking, your point of view, your habits and your pattern. People think you changed. No, you didn't change. You just changed what appeared in life to you what glued to you in your life. Okay. I, I, I always, uh, I apologize from the beginning what I'm saying right now, but it, <laughs> but it is a typical thing. If a bird shits on me, I wash my hair, I don't get new hair. And that's how I feel as a person too. You are still the person. You just remove some clutter. 
you remove some negativity, you heal from things you got hurt, but you still remain the same person, just your point of view, your pattern, your habits, and your attitude changed. And people are saying, oh, this person changed. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense because I, I was thinking about because I was as I was listening to you, I remember like, you know, because you know, as you you're growing in your, you know, um career world, uh, I remember this lady and I love her. I, I will always be grateful to her, you know, when I started in a, in a more of an administrative position because I'm a director. Right. Um, and I was like kind of like I thought I was looking good, you know, and my hair was kind of like she kind of took me under her wing and helped me to um, change or polish a look, but I never changed who I was as a person. And, you know, because that's what was, I was hired for and that's what I would, but I got, you know, but I felt like it does help to give you that moral confidence or when you walk in a room, but I still was the same person and I never will ever change because that's who that's I am. You just adjust it. Yeah, you adjust. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, because this hair color is not my hair color, my natural hair no. color. No, it's, <laughs> no. But <laughs> um, it's adjust, you know. <laughs> adjust. But, but that's the thing. It's like, I think people, like, you know, you know, you know, I talked about that was before. It's like, I'll be happy when. I can, my, it'll be fulfilled when. If I had this, I would. I think that's what people kind of have this mindset that, if I change all these things about myself, then I will find this, achieve my happiness. I will achieve these goals. But that's yeah. the state. You don't want to change who you are. You don't change his no, essence. No, no. That's exactly it. It, it helps you. Like, uh, I have some favorite colors. Mm -hmm. And I have some favorite outfits. If I wear that, of course I feel great. So, going back a little bit as a simple list i said i want to feel great every day what did i do i got rid of everything i like i only kept what i love nice. and when i go in my closet it can be dark at night shirt and sweater i take out i know i wear something i love you know i'm not the the tie and suit person and uh, never been. And uh, it, it is being me. And that's what I encourage everybody. Being you. And uh, I worked uh, 12 years ago with uh, a bank. Smaller bank. And he said, you know, we want, we want more customer service. We want, a, we want the average customer. We don't want the, the, the rich, rich ones. We, we, we want to be a nice private bank. And uh, 12 years ago, being in, in a bank without a tie, you would not see. Yeah. And I said, well, when your average customer comes in and your personnel is there, how do they bond the fastest? If they are touchable. Touchable means if I can relate to them. Mm -hmm. And we started with this bank, polo shirts for ladies and gentlemen. Slacks, yes, but polo shirts. One thing. The other thing is, I said, stop playing on your teller's musical chair. Leave the same person on the same teller. And I say, you're going to see what happens. So people stood in line, all of a sudden they said, oh, you can't go up front because he wanted to go back to the same teller. Because what we have to consider right now, and it is really subconscious, we're not aware of it. We're really not aware of it. We're doing right now Zoom meeting. You in Florida, I'm in California. We meet at the same place virtually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people looking for social points. Do we go to the post office? Most is email. No. Do we go to the bank? Sometimes, yes. But we do a lot from the phone or that. But that became a social point. 
as uh, we train the people to remember by their faces and names. And I tell you, it made a big difference in that bank. It made a big difference in this bank because it was personalized. And we need to be personalized again in our society where our comfort of modern technology creates distance. Big distance. And it also creates an opportunity for people to feel like they could say or do anything they want to and hurt people, you know, intentionally or not oh. intentionally, but it happens. Oh, I, I, I agree with you 100%. If, and here comes again the structure and the doses. If we declutter and use it smartly, it is great. Without modern technology, you and I never connected. I know. Isn't that, and we're yeah. like, we talk all the time now. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Without modern technology, through this whole COVID thing, a lot of people would not have been working from home and still provide the bills and, and, and for their families. Mm -hmm. A lot of things would be different. And it is, it is going to be the future. But we still have to reach out to be personal. And I say social media, let's become social again. I tell you, with at least 40% of my people on my page, and it's a lot, it's 5,000. I had at least one or two telephone conversations already. Hi, how you doing? Or a private message. We try to personalize it. I want to hear the voice. And um, I also, you know, when they say my friend, I say, hey, listen, we are Facebook friends. That is a prescription for Facebook or for LinkedIn, LinkedIn connection. Mm -hmm. We're not connected because we're on social media or on business media. If you don't go the extra step to connect, you will not have a connection. It'll just be another name. It'll just be another name. And, and that's the thing, I think, when you have to, like, invest. And it's, it's hard because I think people are like, oh, well, if I invest time, I, I, I'm taking away from this or that. I find, at least for me, because I'm, I'm a very social person. I've always been a very social person. If I'm not connecting with somebody, I am, like, I will be in the corner, like, just spent because I need social interaction. I, like, my least of favorite days is when nobody comes into the office, nobody's doing anything. It's just like, I'm there. And I, like you said, I didn't look like I did anything today, which I really didn't get to talk to anybody today because no one really came in. But I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, I can go in my, I can go in my office and I can be quiet. I don't care. It's like, no, opposite for me. I'm like, I just want to get out of there. I want to go talk to people. I want to be a part of something. Yeah. So, I mean, cause that's who I am. I, that's how I connect with people. I'm like, you know, like when you do the um, personality tests, I am an ENFJ, um, was an ENFPJ. I am like out there, you know, <laughs> and I, I go high on the, on the E and I go high. And so, but that's who I am. And I know that about myself. But I just feel like, you know, if I didn't have this medium, I would be like, you know, really upset. So. But you're um, a step ahead of it already because you know, and you don't deny. A lot of people are in denial. Oh, I don't need that. I'm good. And uh, then they turn into different escapes. I want to, I want to call it escape is an excuse. And then comes the social escape, which is alcohol. Mm -hmm. Big, big problem through the, the pandemic, especially. I mean, when I talk about alcohol, I don't mean having your beer at night. I mean, having at least 10, 20 beers at night. That's when I talk about alcohol. People turned into numb themselves because it was painful for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and, uh, to deal with this pain, if they think when COVID thinks God is going to be over, they can go back to normal. No. no. It had an impact on them. Even to push it away, it had an impact. And that's why I say sometimes, you have to start now with your mindset. So when everything is over, you hit the ground running. No matter if it's in a relationship, in your job, making a new job. See, 
being a simplimalist, which I discovered a few years back ago, makes it easy. I make things simple. Do I like what I do? No. I love it. Okay. Living simple gives me the possibility to focus on it. To focus on what I love. So when I'm finished with my day, I can look back and say, there was not one dull moment. There was not one moment I would say, oh my God. Okay. You have these moments, but you can change them. You know, uh, that's what I love about my clients. I, I tell them all the time, I'm your father. I'm your big good brother. I'm your confidant and I'm your best friend. You always can pick what you need that day when you talk to me. And some of them start out really funny, you know. I say, I say hi, how are you doing? They don't even say hi. I say, holy fuck, what a week was that? Holy fuck. And I say, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I say, can we reduce that word? <laughs> what and, happened? <laughs> and tell me what happened. And they go over and say, no, no, what happened? You walked in there, okay. And after we structure it, it takes only a couple minutes. We structure what happened. Guess what? Person feels better not because it vented, because it is structured. And most of the time, it wasn't about them. They had a bad day because somebody else had a bad day and dumped it on them. And when we filter it out, we can change it. And that's where it already starts uh, with my clients when they get a different view of life, not being offended by anything. Yeah. Everything is so overdone lately. Overdone. You know, we have, we have to figure out, we are in a normal environment. We have two genders. Okay? We have, thanks God, multicultural country. We can learn from each other. You know, without letting the Italians in the country who wouldn't have spaghetti and pizza. I know. <laughs> so just embrace it and they all get along with each other. It's a point of view, nothing else. We let our mind be influenced who we can like and not like. No, make up your own mind who you like or not like. Oh, I know. It's like, you know, for me, that's like one of my biggest things. It's my, always was one of my biggest pet peeves. It's like, someone will say, well, you can't be my friend if you're her friend or his friend. I'm like, no, because we have different, like, if I, I want to talk to this person about this type of thing, you know, like, because everybody has different, com you know, things in common. It's like, I'm not one note. I'm, I'm many things. And so therefore, maybe because you don't get along with somebody doesn't mean that I can't get along with somebody and that doesn't mean I can't get along with you as well. As well as I feel like I, I work with kids. One of my favorite games is called common ground. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or not. So what happens is you get all the people in a circle and they're in chairs and um, but there's always one, at least one person in the middle. And that person says, I love my neighbor, especially those who, have glasses and then everybody who's got glasses runs around and has to try to find a new chair well in the process you take more chairs out so it's kind of like a reverse like um uh what do you call that uh oh what do you call uh, what the heck is that name of that chair uh well anyways it's a reverse thing so yeah yeah so by the end you have everybody in the middle because you've pretty much taken all the chairs out and usually they have to come up with something that's common ground. And it's usually, well, we're all breathing or we're, you know, we're all human, you know? So I want to break down those barriers so people realize that it's not, like you said, one thing. It's like, okay, well, I love you, especially if you all have brown hair or you're all wearing tennis shoes. Those are kind of easy things. But then all of a sudden it's like, I got to come up with a common ground that everybody has. And that's important because... At the end of the day, we all bleed the same. We all breathe the same. We all love, feel, hurt. You know, we do this stuff. It's, yeah. it's, we may have different cultural. They're human. Yes. For, we forget we that. Have that. We have that. And that's, that's what I like about being a mentor and not 
therapist or anything because I can break with my clients' barriers down. And a new point of view widens the horizon and, and, and things become lighter. They become lighter. They say, you know, I saw this and I thought that and, and wow, what do you think about that? And I say, I don't think, what do you feel about it? I know. I feel, then start thinking. We have to feel it first. We have to feel what we feel. That we have to feel what we feel. Not just feel. Do you think a lot of people, I, I okay, so I said we were going to talk that long. So I don't want to, I want to, you and I are doing more than one show. We already, we already established that. I want to talk about next time when people, do we sweep away or try to um, kind of mask what we feel? Like, I think that's what we're going to talk about next time, you know? So yeah, call it I, hiding. how do we hide? Well, people are good at hiding it. They're great at hiding it. And how do we kind of take the blinders off, take, get off from underneath the barrel bath, you know, bushel basket and, and allow our feelings to be there. Cause raw emotion, no matter if it's good or bad is it, it can, it can really wipe you out or make you very hyper aware. And I think some, yeah. And a lot of people are afraid to be hyper aware. They'd rather just live in this little, okay, this is what I do. This is who I am. This is, don't just, you know, this is my box. I'm happy. Doesn't knock on my door. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But th these are, thanks God, a minority of people. Thanks God. A lot of them wake up after a while and say, hey, I can do better. And I know how I can do better. No, uh, a lot of things to do. But the sad thing is, that they put it all on a financial and material status. Yep, and physical. Mm -hmm. And I found <laughs> because out- Because I'm fixing my hair. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> I found out over the 40 years, you know, I worked in different countries as well, not only in the United States. I, I lived there. Uh, the basic is everywhere the same in every mentality. So if we get away counting pennies, we will be able to make dollars. Exactly. Okay. But leaving the material aside is, if we are inspired, if we are open, if my pocket is open, something can go in and I can give something out. It is an exchange. We have to be aware money is an exchange, nothing else. I work, I get money for it. I with this money in grocery store, I get groceries for it. It is an exchange. And if you get away that we needed to make a living, but we don't need it to live. That's a different. We needed to make a living, but not to live. For live, we need other things. To live, we needed really happiness. And uh, please remind me when we have the next show, happiness, I want to talk to you about how it increases life up to 10 years. That's weird. And I, will, and I will tell you why when we talk next time. How our right mindset automatically, without a doctor nutrition, feeds us the right things. How we can use the right words, because if we use words of hurtfulness, we're not aware of what we hurt ourselves. How it reflects. I want to talk because it's. Happiness is a health. It's a health reason. Unhappy people are dead. Yeah, I know. And it's not even just dead, like physical dead, because that, of course, that's the end. No, but, no, like, even. But, but physical, but I mean, but there's like mental dead. I mean, you look at people and they're like, they're really walking around like zombies. They really are. And it's it's just, you know, like I said, you know, it's there's always something we want to fix or do, and it's just fine. That's part of our evolving, right. but we've got to e embrace what today has and what can I do today to make a change. I just bought this really cool sign and I thought of you, actually I bought two signs. I thought of you, I'm actually, I'm going to put them up here. Because I'm like, <laughs> one was, uh, today's a great day to change the world. <laughs> Sounds a lot like you, right? And the second one was, 
just to, can you imagine that are the greatest stories haven't even been told yet? And I'm like, <laughs> I love it. So I have them in my okay. living room. How can you change the world? I want to interrupt you right here. Yeah. People always say, well, I'm only one person. What can I do? I say, I'm only one person. But you want to know how many lives I changed? And, and those lives I changed, how many lives they changed because it the changed? Ripple. Yes, I said, just stand in front of a huge pond, no wind, nothing, and throw one little pebble in the middle and see the movement. If we do not admit, if we not commit, if we are not taken in, we cannot give. Uh, I don't want to give. Then you don't want to receive. Nope. It is all a cycle. And if we develop a healthy cycle, we live happy and healthy because happiness and healthiness go together. Every physician listens to what I say, will say yes. I agree. I agree. It's so mental health. My um, somebody I know very well um, is getting ready to go through a cancer treatment, and we were talking about it. And it's more like you know, you know, the, obviously the, the the fear and all that, but. It's like mentally, you've got to mentally prepare yourself to just one day at a time and stay happy, healthy in mind, body, and soul, you know, and it's really important. I think that what you do is needed always, but I think more so than any time in, in, in right now in our, in our world, because so many people are like, like you said, when, when we emerge from this, when like, you know, the resurrection, when we can get out of this COVID, people have to reinvent themselves. They have to, well, not reinvent, but you know what I'm saying? They have to find themselves. Where, where, where am I? You know, where no, did yes, I? You stop. I have to stop you right yeah. now. When people always say, I find myself, I say, good luck. I meet you in 20 years at the same point. I know. <laughs> no, don't look for yourself. Create yourself. yourself. <laughs> yeah, you got to be. Create yourself. <laughs> create yourself as well as you know just kind of navigate and and find brand yourself like you said brand yourself you you do branding as well it's kind of like you're making a brand for somebody in the sense of this is who i am and so therefore you know you're a lot of people to shine fully and to kind of put that neon sign on saying this is this is it you know and i i'm embracing it and i love that <laughs> So you are an amazing person. Um, I'm going to um, have you on again. Like I said, I'm starting up again. So thank you. I got some time to put everything together, but it is going to be because my friend here, my mentor, Andre has said to me, you know, you got to work on this and not because it's like, oh, you have to, because he, he sees this is who I am. And he says, you, you have to shine and I want to shine. Even though my hair is a mess right now, but that's okay. <laughs> we have to shine. We have to shine every day of our lives because when we do that for other people and for ourselves, like you said, it is a it, you get so much more reward. So thank you for your time today. I know you Very have welcome. a lot of clients, and he you stretched out a, a time frame for me, and I appreciate every moment of it. So thank you so much for being here. I want and to say the last words. No problem. Please do. Your friends, be all blessed and count them because that is a step to happiness. It is. Thank you so much. And uh, have a beautiful day. He's, he's in California time, so he still has the afternoon. I'm at the point now where I'm <laughs> getting ready for the day to end here soon. So thank you so much. God bless you. you. And I will talk to you soon. And uh, we will have another, Thursday. you too, and we will have another uh, talk. So thank you for listening to One Non Blonde, and I will talk to everybody soon. God bless. Stay real. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, no. I'm going to see if it's going to stop recording. Here we go. Uh, almost got.